I was camping recently, and of course you have to be careful about bringing firewood in from outside the region, so we bought firewood. And I found this piece, it had a lot more to it. It actually broke off um, you know, this, this larger outer section, and this section came out free. This knot was hidden inside. I didn't even know that that was there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just first take off some of these high spots, and then I'm going to try to cut this down and see if there's actually any anything good inside it. I see some checks and cracks that kind of run deep, but I'm hoping that I can get some of this off and maybe actually have something workable. So let's go to the table saw. I've got my table saw set up so that I can remove some of this high stuff. One thing I just want to point out, make sure you wear your safety glasses whenever you're working with things like a table saw. Uh, pieces fly everywhere and I do this all the time. I start to work on it, I'm not even thinking about it, I don't put the safety glasses on and then I end up having stuff get in my eyes. So far I've been really lucky and haven't gotten hurt, but gotta be safe. Hey, that's pretty. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm going to take off just this little bit over here, and then I'm going to try to cut off some of this checking. I should be able to make something pretty nice out of that. I think this is going to become a birdhouse. We'll see. Okay, I changed my mind. I looked at how it's going to fit on the faceplate. I think it's going to be really nice that way. So I'm just going to make this into a hollow vessel uh, just to get some more practice at doing that. First thing I need to do though is I need to kind of trim this end off, make it a little smoother and flatter. On pretty tightly to the Face plate, and we should be good. Just gonna get my face plate on here. I've got it pretty well figured out where the center is. I did take some time just to show you this uh, to take off some of the high spots with the table saw. Just kind of knock it down a bit, take off some of the edges that we're gonna catch a lot. And I'm also being very careful to watch out for these cracks so that I don't screw into them and make them any bigger. Okay, we're all mounted up. I'm going to go up to the lowest speed here, about 500 RPM. Got my roughing gouge. I'm just going to smooth this out as best I can. Things are repositioned and cleaned up a little bit. See this little line right here going right across? This is actually from when I positioned my tool rest and just actually ran my tool across to see if I was getting close to center and be able to ride my bevel the right way. So I think I'm pretty good. I've got my speed turned up now to about 1200 RPM and let's get smoothing.
the end grain of this turns really nice and smooth. I like that. I'm going to drop this down a little bit to make sure that I actually get my center. And I'm going to start hollowing out. Some really bad catches as you can see right in here. Basically I'm just not getting my tool rest positioned well. Being that this is narrow, it's a little hard to get myself positioned, but I'm not going to be coming off the edge and where I have my tool rest deep enough in there. I think I'm good now. Okay, we're getting there. I have to be very careful because of the way this uh, likes to break out, the way the rings are. I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna actually drill in here a little bit and just try to make it a little bit uh, easier to start from the center and work my way out. So I've got my smallest gouge and what I'm going to do is just come in here in the center and just try to take out a little bit. And I've got it taped off so that I know how deep I'm going. Went a little too long in there, got a little hot. I can work out from that pretty smoothly. Gotta bring my uh, tool rest down a bit though. That feels like that should be pretty good. concerned about now is as I come over here I want to make sure I still have tool rest under me and I'm getting to a point where I'm going to have to start using the scraper but I want to at least try to get past some of these cracks.
Okay, I've repositioned everything a little bit, and I'm going to just work on trying to take out as much in the center as I can and not do too much on the edges until I get more of the center really hollowed out. Got a little bit more light set up. I'm gonna switch to the scraper. We're about halfway through hollowing out. I kind of feel like I'm making better progress now. There's a couple of neat little knots and stuff in there. I'm kind of surprised at them. It looks like maybe uh, as this tree was growing, it kind of took over some other stuff. Gotta be careful because I got some cracks developing on the outside here, so I'm just gonna go real carefully. Every time I go deeper, I have to keep repositioning the camera so you can actually see inside here. And you can see my hole down in here. This is the hole that I drilled to get my depth. And I've still got about a half inch to go before I get down to the base of that. base of that hole. Well, we're almost right at the base of that hole. I'm just going to try to take out a little bit of the bowl gouge. Not getting any of the edges at all. Finish out the bottom a little bit, and then we will be good. The hollowing out has come out really nicely. The big problem now is, as you can see, I've started to develop a couple of cracks along the sides here. So before I go any further with sanding or parting this or anything else, what I'm going to do is just try to fill in some of these cracks, clamp this, and then I'll come back to it later when it's uh, dried up a little bit and it should be solid. Got my clamps, got my parchment paper, got my glue. I'm going to work some glue into these cracks. Try to push it in. When the clamps get on it and squeeze it tight, it'll push some of it back out again, but I know I'll have it on all of my edges. This is a tiny little crack right here, but it's developing. Honestly, this happens mostly because of my technique. I'm a little too aggressive, I think, and I end up getting a lot of catches cause me problems. 
So, it is my fault. A little dust in there, don't want that. This is a crack that's fair, barely visible on the outside. I don't see it at all on the inside, but I'm not taking any chances. There we go. Now to wrap it in the parchment. The parchment will do two things. It's going to keep the clamps from getting stuck on the piece in any way. Also going to protect the piece a bit from the clamps themselves. Last time I did this, I was a little too aggressive with my clamps. I did make some lines in the piece. So, this time I don't want to be quite as aggressive. However, I do want to squeeze this nice and tight. All right. Now I'll just let that sit. That's dried long enough. Let's get it opened up and see what we've got. Alright, that's set up pretty nicely, looks pretty firm. I'm going to need to trim off some of these uh, big gouges and stuff and finish my shaping and should be able to cut it off. I'm going to start by just trying to smooth this off here, take off some of these nicks and gouges. So I've got my lathe set at 900 RPM and I'm just going to come in with the spindle gouge just to try to take some of this off. Very nice. So now it's just a matter of doing some smoothing on the inside and the outside, and then I'll be able to part this off. Got my round nose scraper, and I'm going at a higher RPM, about 1200 RPM now. That looks really good. I'm going to scrape on the inside a little bit and then we'll sand. Okay, let's see how we do it here. I think that's ready for some sandpaper. That's looking really nice. So I'm going to start with a quick hit with an 80 grit sandpaper on the inside. If you have experience sanding the inside of vessels like this, I'd love to hear your suggestions on uh, different materials and different tools. I don't have a whole lot right now, so most of it's by hand, and I'd like to know what to get and what the best way is to go about it. Step up to a higher grit now. So it's a 120 grit.
doesn't go a whole lot finer on the inside, uh, just a little bit as I do the outside. So I'm going to switch the view around a little bit so we can work on the outside. So I have a little bit of an experiment here. This is uh, the, the type of sanding material that's used for drywall and things like that. It's designed not to clog. You can see it's a screen. I've tried it a little bit on some other pieces, just messing around, trying to make sure that I could hold it safely without uh, you know, getting dragged by it or anything like that. And it doesn't clog up very much. It does seem to hold up well. So I'm just going to try it on a, a piece that I actually you know, kind of care about. So I like that. It's got a uh, really nice finish to it so far. It doesn't have quite as many lines as you get from holding the regular sandpaper here because it's got the cross grooves. So it's doing real well. I've got some high spots right here still that I need to take down a little bit. I need to be very careful because this is where the piece is the thinnest. I'm liking that. I'm surprised. I thought that was going to be a total fail. It actually worked out really well. So, I'm going to go with a little bit higher grit now. I've got a 120 grit sanding sponge. Okay, I'm bumping up to a 320 sponge now. So I like that it's already getting a nice polish to it. I really don't like the lines that I get. So I'm going to have to pull out my palm sander and see if I can uh, get some of those off. So I've got my palm sander with a 400 grit. I'm going to see if I can get some of these lines off and get a little bit more shine here and keep going. Well, it improved it somewhat. It's not quite where I want to be, but it's definitely getting closer. I'm going to go with a higher grit, get a little more polish on there, and then I'm going to switch off to a different polishing method. Switch to a 500 grit. Good thing about this paper is it actually fits my sander, which will work a lot better. Alright, I've got to sand it down to the point that I wanted. I went all the way to a 2000 grit, and I just love how that puts a shine on it without even having to do anything else. So, what I'm going to do now is just part it off, and then I'm going to work on actually applying a finish. So, I've got my bench grinder set up with a buffing wheel on it, and this isn't usually used for applying the full finish, but I'm going to just give it a try with a little bit of linseed oil and just buffing this on it a little bit. I've already tried it dry and it feels like it should be pretty easy to control and it's already gotten a little bit of a polish to it just from doing it dry. So I'm going to try it with a little bit of the linseed oil and see how we go. I debated applying to the piece or applying to the wheel, but I think it's going to work better applying to the piece. After buffing for a bit, looks pretty good. I like the satin finish that's on it. I wasn't really hoping for a high gloss. I wanted just this uh, nice shine. That's about it. So I'm really liking how that looks. One thing I need to point out, I'm talking about linseed oil, I'm talking about a cotton wheel. Uh, cotton and linseed oil, they work really well together, but they also can burn. 
they will sit and light up on their own if you just let them sit plump together. So what I need to do is make sure I put this in a closed container, uh, a metal container, fireproof container, and make sure that it stays, uh, you know, stays fire safe until it's completely dry. And then once it's dry, it's all right. I just need to be careful with that. Make sure if you're using anything like linseed oil and you're using anything like cotton that you uh, keep things clean and take care of everything. Certainly don't want to burn your house down just for a little piece. So the finish is dried and this is the finished piece. I'm going to send it off to the campground where we were camping when we had the firewood that this came from. I just think it'd be kind of a nice thing for them to have on the desk and you know, use as a pencil or something like that. It's really not going to be good for anything else. It's not uh, completely watertight. It doesn't have a food safe finish or anything like that on it. I wasn't really making it as a cup like that. Um, but I'm just going to send it to them as a pencil holder and as a little thank you for all the fun times that we've had at their campground. So thank you for joining me today on the Peaceful Wood Turner, and I'll see you next time.